Hello guys, my name is Erik Arnebeck and in this video here I would like to show you how we can achieve different effects using post-processing materials in Unreal Engine. Alright, so the things that I would like to show off is four different effects. This effect is the first one. This is a effect where the screen is transitioned to black starting from right going to left. And we could use this kind of effect if we are like at the end of a level and we want to transition this screen to black. And here is yet another effect that we can use to make the screen go black. And it's a bit more advanced and here's a third one and it is even more advanced. Yeah, so... And the final effect I would like to show off is this effect here. That is a, this is a kind of uh, heat haze effect that causes the screen to look a bit uh, shimmery and a bit distorted, as we can see here. Alright, so the first effect I would like to show off is this effect here. This is a, vert a fade out effect that vertically goes from black starting from right going to left. So let me show you how we can implement that. So what I have done here is that I have in advance created a third person product in Unreal Engine. It's just a default product here. So what I will do is that I will create a new material, a new post-processing material. And a post-processing material is basically just a material where we do a calculation for every single pixel on the screen. And this calculation can be used to achieve all kinds of effects that look cool and stuff. Okay, so I will set the material domain to post process and the I will introduce a scene texture node here and I will set the scene texture ID to post process input one and if I plug this node in here then we can see that we just get an image of the original scene and so this basically here is just a material that post processing material that does nothing it just takes the, an image of the original scene and passes it out that's all it does but we can use this material editor here in order to implement a calculation that implements a post processing effect so we can for instance take this color here and multiply it by some other color we can for instance set a red color here Set the red color here and multiply it by the original scene. And now watch what happens. See, what has happened here is that I have taken every pixel in the original scene and multiplied them by this red color here. And what happens then is that the red channel here, red component here, is one. And so the red component is preserved since if you multiply something by one, then you just get back the original value. But the green and blue component here, they are zero. And so if you multiply zero by something, then you just get zero. And so what happens is that, well, the green and blue channels, they are thrown away. They just become zero. And so if you multiply this thing here by this thing here, you just get a scene where the green and blue components have been thrown away. And so you just get a very red kind of scene here. So what I've done here is that I've used this material editor here to create a post-processing material. And a post-processing material, all that it does is that it implements some kind of calculation here. In this case, this calculation is just a multiplication. But we can use it to implement another kind of effect. I will show that right now. Not this. Uh, we will introduce a texture sampler. Uh, there we go. A texture sample node, which just contains a texture. I will set it to this texture here that I have imported beforehand. So what I will do now is that I will use this texture here as a mask that mixes between the original scene and a black color. This is what I will do here. See? What I will do is that I will get rid of this multiply node and make a lerp node. I will plug this thing in here, and this thing in here, and this thing in here, and this thing in here. This is not what happens. What I have done is that I have first taken this mask here and laid it over the screen like this. So it's laid over the screen like this, 
And now what happens now is that when the left areas here, we are covered by a white color. And so these areas here are covered by a one value because a white color is a one value, a value of one. And these right areas here, we are covered by a black color. And so these areas here have a zero value. Okay, and now what happens here is that when these areas here are covered by a one value, and if the alpha value is one, then the lerp node has output the B value, which is just the original scene. Yeah, but on these in these uh, right areas here, well, the mask has a zero value, and if the alpha value here is zero, then we just get the A value here, and so we get a black color in these right areas here. Mm. Okay, and there's also a grayscale area here where we have a color that is between black and white. So it's a color between zero and one. And what happens then is that we get a mix between these two colors here. So that if like we get a 0 0.5 value here, then we are going to get a mix between the original scene and the black color. And that's why we get this smooth fade out effect going on here in the middle. Okay. So that is the beginnings of the effect I showed you guys. So the effect you want to implement is this effect right here. We want to make this thing here move from the right to the left is what you want to do now. In order to achieve this, I will first introduce a texture. Where is it? Where is it? Okay, where is it? There it is. A texture coordinate node. And a texture coordinate basically just specifies what pixel color should we sample from. Like, if we visualize the texture coordinates, they are 0, 0 in this top left corner, and they are 1, 1 in this bottom right corner. So in this corner here, the x value is 1, 0, and the y value is 0. And so the red and green channels are 0, and so we get a black color here. But in this corner here, the x value is 1 and the y value is 1. And so the red channel is 1 and the green channel is 1. And so we get a yellow value here, since if you mix red and green, you get yellow, of course. So we can see here now that the text coordinates will vary from 0, 0 to 1, 1 in this as we go from top left to bottom right. And these coordinates are used to determine which pixels we should sample from when we sample from a texture sampler. So, for instance, if we want to know the color in this area here, well, in this area here, the texture coordinate is 0, 0, and this means that we sample a color from this place right here. Yeah, and in this place here, well, the texture coordinate is 1, 1, and this means that it samples in this corner here. And if we just plug in the text coordinate into the node here, then it doesn't make a difference because these text coordinates, they are implicit. Even if you don't specify them, you are going to implicitly be using them. But what we will do now is that we will modify these text coordinates to achieve a certain effect. I will create a new two-dimensional vector here. Okay, so, and I will set the y component to zero. And I will set the x component to a scalar parameter that I call t. Now, I'll just set the scalar parameter to zero for the time being. Now I will add this vector to the text coordinates in order to modify them, to distort them. And now, if I do that, then nothing happens because I'm just adding a zero vector to the text coordinates. So of course, nothing happens. But look what happens if I set the t-value 0.2. Then this thing here has moved to the right, to the left. And that is exactly the effect that we want. So as we increase the value of t, it just moves to the left until it covers the entire screen. Okay? And what is basically happening here is that, well, if the texture coordinates are unmodified, then this pixel here will be sampling from this pixel here. But if I add like 0.2 to the x component, then I will be sampling from here instead. 
Okay, and this means that this pixel will become black. So if I set this one to 0 0.2, then yeah, this pixel all of a sudden is samples from here, it samples from here instead. And so you sample a black color because I modified the text coordinates. And one important thing we have to take into account here is that we have to be careful how we set the tiling mode of this texture here. Right now the tiling mode is clamp, but I could have set it to like wrap or something, and this means that it looks like this. Because we have to be careful when we sample texture values outside the actual texture. So like this pixel here for instance, uh, if we add 0 0.2 to the X component, it's going to sample outside here. And then if I set the tiling method to wrap, it just means that it jumps to the other side to here. And so it gets a white value. But if I set it to clamp, it, it means that if I, even if I sample outside here, this black color here, it will just continue. And this means that we get the effect that we want here. Okay. So if we now, if we now vary the parameter t from negative one to positive one, then we can slide this black thing from right to left. So now it's negative one and it's all white, but as I increase the value of the t parameter, it will move to the left. Uh, it will move to the left, see? Let's see it as, as, as I increase it. All right, so yeah, you could like now create a blueprint that controls how the value of the t parameter changes as time goes by. And in this way, you could create an effect. I will show you what happens if, if the t parameter varies from C my negative one to one. So we can see how the effect looks like. So first I will create this node here called the bug sign time. It is a node that constantly produces a value between 0 and 1, 0 and 1. So it goes from 0, and then it goes to 1, and then it goes to 0, and then it goes to 1. So like, let me see here. See, it goes from 0 to 1, 1 to 0, 0 to 1, 1 to 0, as time goes by. And we can use this to visualize what it looks like when the t parameter is changed as time goes by. So I, this value here will now, that is produced by this node, is going to be in the range 0 to 1, but we would like a value in the range negative 1 to positive 1. So in order to achieve that, I'm just going to have to convert this number. I will just multiply it by 2, and then I will add negative 1 here. And now I will... Uh, plug plug in this color here again here okay now let's add now let's put this value here in the x component instead of the t component let's put it here and now we can see what happens as we vary as we change the t parameter from negative one to positive one as time goes by as we can see here that we have successfully implemented a post processing effect that creates a kind of transition to black. Okay, I will now show you how we can use this effect here in the editor, the level editor here. I will first create a material instance so that we can use it. And now I will add it to this post processing volume. A post processing volume is a volume where a certain post processing effect is active. So as long as the character is in this box here, the effect will be active. Okay, and now I can just simply add this post-processing effect to this volume here. So I will just uh, add it here, set, just drag and drop it like this. See, and now we can see the effect in our, the editor. Yeah, and that of course looks really annoying, so I will turn it off for the time being. Uh, there we go. Let me just plug in the T parameter again. Okay, so that was the first effect I wanted to show off. The next effect I want to show off here is this effect here. 
it basically subdivides the screen into tiles and every tile is switched to black at a different time and if you do this then it creates a pretty cool effect like the way you basically the way i implement this effect is that i created this texture here that contains a whole bunch of different grayscale values and these grayscale values they specify when each tile is switched to black so these really black tiles here they are uh, they have very small values that are close to zero and so these tiles they are switched to black the first of them all but these rather bright values they have values that are close to white so they are close to a one value and this means that they go to black the latest of them all i will show you guys how we can implement this effect all right let me create a new material here as new material one that's a great name i will create a new post processing effect we create here with a scene texture again set it to post process input one zero again okay it's warm today okay and now i will introduce Yes, another texture sampler here. Okay. And I will now introduce a conditional statement and if statement. Okay, and again, I will introduce a scalar parameter that represents the time. Now, what I will do here is that I will plug this thing in here and this thing in here. And now, when the time parameter is higher than the value in here, then we will go to black. Then we will make sure that the blacker color are transitioned to black faster than the others, so that the, the tiles with a gray color, with a really black color, becomes black quicker than the others. So we, what we do here is that we check whether the time parameter is greater than the value in here, and if it is, then we go to black. So we go to black when I output a black color. Otherwise, if it is smaller, then we should just use the original color. See, and now you see here, now we have T parameter is zero. So of course, uh, we, we, none of the tiles are black. But if I increase the T parameter, it will now be bigger than the T parameter will now have a bigger value than some of these tiles. And so they become black. And as we increase the value of the t parameter, more and more tiles become black. Okay. So let me let's once more create a debug sign time node so we can see what happens as we increase the value from zero to one. So to visualize this, let me see here. Let's see here what happens as we increase the value from zero to one. Well, the effect goes to black just as we wanted. Yeah, so that looks pretty cool, I think. So like all, all that I did here is that I took this texture here and laid it, laid it over the screen. And now the screen has been divided up into a bunch of tiles. And you use this time parameter here to control when each tile goes to black. That's all I did here. It is not that complicated, as you can see. All right, now let me show off a third effect. This is also an effect that is based on tiles. I have once again divided the screen up into a bunch of tiles and use that to implement a certain kind of effect. This is a bit more advanced than the previous one, but it's actually not that bad if you really break it down. So all that I have really done here is that I have created this texture here that subdivides the screen into tiles again. And every tile is just a box, as we can see here. And we can see that the inner parts of the box are blacker than the outer parts of the box. So these parts here are black, but these outer parts, they are more bright. And now what happens if I take a T parameter and vary it from zero to one, what is going to happen is that, well, if uh, in the beginning the T parameter will have a small value, and so only the inner parts of the box are included. And so we get only a small box. But as the T parameter increases its value, then more rings here are included, and so we get a bigger box. So we get the effect of a growing box, is what we get here. 
Okay, so here's bad effect I showed you before. I will show you how it is. It works. It's it's actually very similar to the previous effect. We have an if statement here, and we use this mask in order to control when we go to black. So let me see. Let me plug this thing in here, and now the t parameter is zero, and so it will always be smaller than the value in the texture. But if I now increase the t parameter to 0 0.2, then the inner parts of these boxes are included because the t parameter exceeds the values here. And so we get small boxes. And as the t parameter grows, then we get bigger and bigger boxes. And in the end, the boxes, they cover the screen entirely. Okay, so that's not that complicated really. And now one effect that we now one thing here that we can do in order to make the effect look even better is that we add the x component of the text coordinate to the t parameter, then the boxes to the very right they will start growing quicker than the boxes to the very left. And if I add that value, the x component of the text coordinates, if I add that value here, look what happens. See? Then you get this effect, and that looks really cool, I think. All right. So that was that effect. Okay. So the final effect I would like to show you guys is this effect here. This is a kind of heat haze effect. Like if you are near like a lava in some game or something, then it's gonna be really, really warm and you want a heat haze effect or like if you are like underwater then you will want some kind of distorted underwater effects and this effect here it basically distorts the screen a bit and you can use this to implement like an underwater effect or a heat haze effect like I said let me show you how we can implement that I have already prepared a project for that uh, where did I put it here it is Here's the, here's the heat haze effect in the editor. That looks really distorted, of course. Okay, so the, how we can implement this kind of effect is that we take the original text coordinate and we add a random value to that text coordinate. So like if we just take the original text coordinate here, then we just get the original image. But what I have done is that I have added a random value to that text coordinate in order to distort the texture. So what I've done is that I've taken the original text coordinate here, or rig, and added a value to it. So like, okay, so uh, let me go through this effect. Uh, so what I do here is that I first use this texture here as a source of random values. It has a bunch of random values in it that I use to distort the, te the texture coordinates. And I use the red component here in order to distort the x axis and the green component in order to distort the y axis. And you can only store positive values in a texture, so we get a random value here that is in the range in the range 0 to 1 but we want now a value that is in the range negative 1 to positive 1 so what we do is that we convert it we just multiply it by 2 again and add 2 and now here we are going to have a random value that is in the range 0 to 1 okay so next thing what we do is that we multiply this random value here by a radius of distortion value so what we do here is that we multiply it by 30 and that means that maximally we can distort this text coordinate into a text coordinate that is 30 pixels away. So like if the radius of distortion is 3, then we can maximally distort this thing here into one of these values here, is what this value means. Okay, so we multiply this radius of distortion by this random value here. And now at this point here, we're going to have a value that is in the range negative 30 to positive 30. And this value here specifies that we wish to maximally 
we wish to distort the texture coordinate to a value that is 30 pixels away. But we now need to multiply this value here by the size of a pixel in order to do that, because the size of a pixel is going to be the width of a pixel is 1 over the width of a texture, and the height of a pixel is 1 over the height of that texture. So we need to multiply that, we need to multiply this value here by the inverse size, and we can get that value from here. And now here we can now basically just add, now that we have multiplied this one here, we have adjusted the pixel size so that it is correct, and now we can just add it to the text coordinate, and now we have achieved the effect that we want. So we can play around with this value here, we can like set this radius of distortion to something more like 10, and then the effect is a lot more subtle of course, so you could go crazy and set it to 70 or something, and it goes just insane, it looks really weird. Yeah, so that's how we can implement that effect. Okay, so that was the effect that I had to show off. Well, I think the main takeaway from this video is that if you create the right texture, then you can achieve the effects that you want. If you want to create a text, an effect that looks like uh, well, this, then you just have to create a grayscale texture that is subdivided into the into tiles like this. And if you want to create an effect of growing boxes then you just create this texture here that I showed you earlier. And if you want a heat effect, then you create the right kind of random texture and you get the effect that you want. Okay, uh, one thing that I forgot to show off, so to explain, however, was that I also used a, text, a panner here in order to modify my text coordinate. Like, if I just, uh, if I don't have a panel, then the effect here is going to be constant. See, now we just get a distortion effect that doesn't move. But what I do here is that I use a panel here, and this panel will just add a value on the y-axis every single frame, so that the, so that from one frame to the other, we end up sampling different random values, and this causes the effect to move and be more dynamic and be less boring. So that's what I use this panel for. But yeah. So yeah, that was what I had to show off in this video. And yeah, the main takeaway was that create the right texture and you can get the effect that you want.